Hi all, welcome back to the lecture on Microsoft Azure AZ900. In this lecture, we will deploy an Azure Kubernetes cluster using Azure portal. So let's get started. In order to start, let's select create a resource here. And we can find the resource that is Kubernetes cluster either by typing here or in the popular list. As you can see here, there is Kubernetes service here in the popular list. Go ahead and click on that. All right, now we are in this particular wizard where you need to define few things like basics, node pools, authentication, networking, integration, stacks, review and create in order to get this Kubernetes cluster up and running, right? To do that, you need to select a subscription. I'm using MSDL platform subscription. Go ahead, choose your own subscription, right? You have to select a resource group. I'm going and selecting my resource group, All right? Uh, let's give it a Kubernetes cluster name. Uh, let it be easy, easy 900 Kubernetes cluster all right uh, this particular name given is valid you can see the green tick here region go ahead and select your region i'm going to select east us availability zone as we know uh, right uh, by default, the nodes will be spread among availability zone, zone 1, 2, 3, right? You can see here, in order to provide high availability and resiliency to the overall setup, right? Now the Kubernetes version, by default, I mean, uh, it is assigned to 1.19.9. In this case, as of now, uh, there are more versions available. You can basically go here and see whichever you want, but I'm going with the default one, which is recommended. Next, we need to look at the primary node pool, right? So what's the node size? And we have uh, here the standard D2S version two, right? So what's the idea with the VM instance size here, right? We have seen this size in virtual machines, right? And we can take a look down here and look for, let's go ahead and change the size and let us look for the more size options. And we can take a look down to uh, D series two here. As you can see here, the D2S version two general purpose, it has two virtual CPUs and seven gigabits of RAM and data disk of eight, right? So this is uh, V2 in the second one and the virtual machine uses two virtual CPUs and seven RAM, right? So let's change it to the smaller virtual machine instance size. Let me go back here and select V2S and click on select, right? At the bottom row. So we will run the nodes inside standard V2S virtual machine and it will be equipped with two virtual CPUs and four gigabits of RAM, as you can see that here, right? Let's move on to the node pools. All right, so here it, it is agent pool, the operating system is Linux, and there are three nodes in the pool, right? As you can see here. Actually, I will go back to the previous node, previous section, and select the node B node count be one and let's next go back to the node poles you can see the um, change in number here as well i'll leave that as default now let's go to the authentication i am leaving this i will keep all the things here as default and move on to the networking integration i leave that as uh, default next i'll go to integrations i'll leave that as default and tags if you want to add any tag go ahead and give it a name and a value uh, I, i'm not interested in adding a tag let's go on and click on review plus create all right uh, please 
so it is creating the service principle so this is related to the authentication right how you authenticate to kubernetes cluster running final validation and once the validation passed we can go ahead and click on create button right after clicking on create new create button it takes around 10 to 15 minutes to get the kubernetes cluster up and running for us right so we need to pause the video As you can see mc my resource group az900 kubernetes cluster west europe right go ahead and select that and the az900 kubernetes cluster is the name of the uh, cluster which you have given and west europe is the location where you are deploying this particular thing so if i see in the resource group i see a lot of resources have been deployed here starting from the ip address then the network security group a route table this is all uh, this is used for routing purposes right a virtual machine scale set uh, do not worry about virtual machine scale set and all because it is not a part of uh, Azure Fundamentals exam blueprint, a virtual network and, and last the load balancer, right? So all these resources are created automatically when you deploy a Kubernetes cluster. Now let's go back to our cluster, right? Um, back on the cluster where so you can use the top search for and type for Kubernetes service and uh, you'll get to the page here. All right, I'll select, I'll select the Kubernetes service and our cluster is here now. Uh, taking a look from the top, I'll just select this one, which, have, which we have created. Taking a look from the top here. We, I can see resource group, a very important uh, and status. So cluster is deployed, the deployment succeeded. Now what's the region? And uh, turning on to the right, we have Kubernetes version, right? We have uh, API address and which is globally unique, right? We can connect to our cluster and we, we will use Azure Cloud Shell here. This is the indication of Cloud Shell. This is the icon of Cloud Shell. You can run Azure CLI commands directly in your laptop, but uh, you need to first install Azure CLI on your laptop or PC, or you can run Azure CLI command in the Azure Cloud Shell. The biggest advantage of using Azure Cloud Shell is that you can you can use it from any device that, that that can connect to the internet, like phone, laptop, whatever, right? Log into Azure portal and run commands inside the Azure Cloud Shell, right? So let's start uh, Azure Cloud Shell. Let's click on it. After clicking on it, a wizard like this appears. Drag that up. So, so for the first time you start the Azure Cloud, a welcome banner is displayed like this. Welcome to Azure Cloud Shell. You, you need to select between these two options, that is Bash and PowerShell, right? Bash or PowerShell, uh, uh, you mean in Bash you can run Azure CLI commands and Bash is uh, usually the option to choose if you're uh, coming to Azure with some Linux background. The second option is PowerShell. You can use to run PowerShell command and it is better option if you have some Windows administration background. Now, why is this, right? Because you may have used PowerShell already, so you may be familiar using it. You can select either Bash or PowerShell because later on, this, uh, later on uh, uh, in Azure Cloud Shell, you can switch between these two, right? For now, I will select Bash selected the bash and we need to create storage for our cloud shell machine so again instead of installing azure cli or PowerShell on my laptop i can connect to azure cloud shell that has already cli and powershell installed and this is a virtual machine managed by azure right still it's need it needs some storage space so that's why we are creating it now i will now select create storage here 
and this will take a couple of minutes you can see that requesting a cloud shell succeeded connecting to terminal let's wait for it to connect to the terminal and here is the azure cloud shell console right i want to increase the font size so let me go go to the settings here text size large i hope you can see the text the larger font right now all right uh, in order to connect and manage a kubernetes cluster we can use the kube kubectl command so it's a kubernetes command line client and it is actually uh, this is actually how it is written right but before we do that we first need to type a command and the command is az az aks get credentials let me type that full right double slash double dash resource dash group name of the resource group my resource group right Double dash name of the cluster okay. you need to make sure you are entering the correct name of the cluster kubernetes cluster right after entering this particular command hit enter so now this command actually gets the credentials for our clusters right so uh, az900 kubernetes cluster in the resource group you have specified right so when we try to authenticate to the cluster uh, information in this file will be used for authentication right and if you are curious enough to know how it works you can you can copy the full path and now let me type this command back slash home right if you hit enter you can see all these details right so this is the authentication file we can also see here the token and so on and but anyway it is not needed for a azure fundamentals exam right so in order to connect to our cluster and uh, Check if you have any nodes running. We can type type kubectl get nodes. Right. This is the command to get uh, to check if you have any nodes running in the cluster. Right. Let's enter. Click on enter. Right. Here's the name. Uh, then. Uh, AKS agent pool 27291610361036 right VM VM SS and couple of zeros right status is ready the role is agent and the age it is running from past 38 minutes and the version of that Kubernetes cluster is version v1.19.9 which we had selected before right so this is not the master node the node is running for about 38 minutes already and the last uh, last is the kubernetes was right we are running uh, with this cluster in 19.9 uh, .9, right this is how we can create a kubernetes cluster by using azure platform and check if the kubernetes cluster node is available for you by using cloud shell you can also do, do this using azure cli but I recommend you to explore on the Azure Cloud Shell, right? This is it for this lecture and I hope you like this. I'll see you in the next one.
Thank you.